Okay, so take two of episode one of American Football, my new um, series. I once again had stupid sound issues. Um, I think I've sorted them out for good this time. <clears throat> what it was, there was some software I was using to try and make the sound quality better. But you know, I'm just not, I'm just not computer savvy enough to be able to to sort it out. So. I still have my the mic or whatever that's supposed to make it better, but I'm just not going to use the software. So, um, so that's the deal with that, and I do apologize um, for that issue. <clears throat> so, but let's go ahead and look at what I've what this series is about. Um, my biggest thing is that I have created a a, a database. Um, file an editor file which adds promotion and relegation to the american system which is um i think kind of cool i i'm not going to say i'm a uh, in america um in the united states within the soccer community there is a quite the debate raging about promotion and relegation uh, i'm not as militant about it as a lot of a lot of uh, promotion relegation supporters are <clears throat> um, I would love to see it I think it would be fun um, I do think it would bring a lot to soccer here in America that um, we don't have um, that would you know it'd be, it'd be awesome to watch you know relegation battles but <clears throat> I also can't promise that it wouldn't be damaging so um, I, I guess like it's 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 I would love for them to put it in if it wouldn't be detrimental to the sport here um and to be fair there a lot of the more militant promotion relegation supporters would tell me that it would absolutely not be detrimental uh and that any losses that we would suffer by putting in promotion relegation would be greatly outweighed by the benefits <clears throat> which may be true i don't know i you know i i'm not one of these guys that that claims to be able to know the future be able to look into the crystal ball and see what's going to happen but um i do think it would be cool so what i've done is i created an editor file and i've always tried to create an editor file in the past that put promotion relegation into the u.s pyramid without losing the mls rules and i was never able to make it work um for whatever reason, you know, MLS in FM, there's a lot of hard coding, and so it's it's kind of hard to get around that um, to edit to the you know the league. <clears throat> and so when I would try to do it, when I try to put promotion relegation in, it would end up causing the league to stop generating uh, fixtures, um, and so it would just it was just it was impossible. Well, it wasn't impossible because I have figured it out. I have managed to make it happen. Um, this file puts ProRel into MLS, keeps the MLS rules, keeps the All-Star game, keeps all the drafts, uh, all the, the, the contract types, you know, designated player, homegrown player, so on and so forth. It keeps everything about MLS. It just adds promotion relegation. And so um, let's kind of look at how I've set it up. <clears throat> and this is a game that I'm playing with my team, the Houston Dynamo. Um, so this is MLS, and as you can see, <clears throat> these two bottom places in each conference are red. And normally you don't see that in MLS when you're playing at FM. What that means is the bottom two teams in each conference are relegated. <clears throat> they go down to the North American Soccer League, or the NASL, where <clears throat> they'll have two teams promoted from each conference and the way it's going to work it doesn't show i couldn't get the the green to show for playoff qualification but the nasl will have playoffs the top four in each conference will have a one will have a playoff and um and i mean they'll have a league championship playoff with four teams from each conference playing for the league title for the nasl championship uh, but in the first round you've got the Eastern Conference Final Four and the Western Conference Final Four, and the two teams that win those sem those conference semifinals in each conference are promoted. So you could finish, for example, looking at the table there, you see the Cosmos are in fourth place. If they stay in fourth place, they go to the playoffs, and they win the semifinal game, they get promoted. So um, finishing in the top four in each conference can help you to have a chance to be promoted. It puts promotion relegation into American soccer 
but it keeps also the playoff format, which is pretty big in American sports. Say what you want about it. Um, it's part of our sports here, and so I, you know, it's still there here. Like no, I, I didn't do the single table. A lot of the pro rail people insist on single table. I'm trying to just get the best of both worlds. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the NASL, the bottom two in each conference, are relegated to the USL, the United Soccer League. Um, and same format, bottom two in each conference are relegated. And then I also put in the USL D3, which is will be starting in real life next year. Uh, obviously here I've greatly expanded it. I've also dumped all of the... Um, reserve teams from the MLS clubs, Orlando B, Toronto FC 2, DC United 2. They've all got dumped to the USL 3. They can promote as high as the USL, but I tried to set up the database so that they could not get into the top two divisions. I want MLS and NASL to be all professional teams, no reserve teams. Um, so that's promotion relegation with MLS in my file. <clears throat> I'll probably make that a download uh, available in the comments or in the show more section of this video. Um, I also, one thing I'll, I'm going to kind of add real quick. Um, I remember I used to have a lot of fun playing FM in like 05, 06. Um, you used to be able to play with an MLS team, win the CONCACAF Champions League, or finish at a certain place, and advance to the Copa Sudamericana, which is like the Europa League for South America. <clears throat> Um, and I mean, that used to be true in real life. Um, but CONCACAF changed the way they did the Champions League, their own Champions League. So the CONCACAF Champions League was in the fall and spring, which the Sudamericana, most of it's played in the fall. So CONCACAF was unable to keep sending teams to the Sudamericana, so they stopped. But the CONCACAF Champions League has now changed, and it is back. Um, <clears throat> it's, Trying to think of the best way to sort of lay it out there. So they have a, um, they do have a fall tournament, but that's called the CONCACAF League, which is like the Europa League. Um, but the only teams that go to it are like the Central American teams and three Caribbean teams, and they're playing to get into the CONCACAF Champions League. All of the MLS teams that qualify are automatically put into the Champions League, which is only played in the spring. So long story short, <clears throat> MLS now will not have any CONCACAF games in the fall. So it's, and which by the way, that's also true of Mexico, uh, the Mexican league. So CONCACAF now is discussing with CONMEBOL the possibility of sending teams once again to the Copa Sudamericana. So I created a file that did that. I recreated the Sudamericana and the Libertadores <clears throat> and the Recopa Sudamericana so that MLS teams can now go to the Sudamericana. And by extension, if they win the Sudamericana, they then advance to uh, to the Recopa, and then even to Libertadores. So <clears throat> it really adds a dimension to the game. For it, It's really kind of a it's fun continental competition for MLS. Um, you play in MLS, and that's one of the big knocks, is that the continental competition is weak. Um, at best, you're playing maybe one or two Mexican clubs. Uh, in continental competition, usually it's you're playing some you know weak uh, Costa Rican team, Honduras, whatever, which actually is more of a challenge than people realize. But um, this file that I put in makes gives you the possibility of playing South American teams. So, so that's what this uh, this series is about. That's why yes, started another MLS series. I'm hoping that this will be the last one that I start and I just play this one all the way through because I think it'll be fun. Um, <clears throat> so I um, real quick we'll look at the preseason. Then we'll do I have a live com, but what it really is is a recording of the Philadelphia game. <clears throat> so I have um, this is my squad. I have some made some changes. I got rid of Adolfo Machado. Uh, I got rid of Felipe Senderos, which was a tough one to lose. Um, a lot of you people, that's a name that a lot of you might actually recognize, um, Swiss defender. He was very good, but he's getting old, and when I have the chance to get rid of these old guys, I'm gonna. He was 32, I think. Machado was 32. The hardest to get rid of, though, is Beasley, DeMarcus Beasley. He's a legend. I remember getting up at 3 a.m. and watching him play in that 2002 World Cup um, when the U.S. made it all the way to the quarterfinal. So it's soft spot in my heart for Demarcus Beasley, but he was 34 years old, too old. Um, 
And Atlanta United came to me offering me a first round draft pick for him. And that would be stupid for me to turn down because I can use that draft pick to actually get an American player who's young and good. I, I take the draft seriously <clears throat> um, because you in MLS games and FM, and well, it's true in real life, you need the best possible American players you can get your hands on. You can always go get foreign players that are good. Um, but if your if your American players are are weak, you, you're going to really struggle, especially in the U.S. Open Cup. You can only put five foreigners on the field in the Open Cup, so you've got to have enough American guys to win that competition. Well, enough quality American players. So, so I use the draft to, um, well, to build up. Um, so looking at my um, <clears throat> my team, I you know traded away those guys. I brought in some, so I've got. Um, my biggest acquisition I made just before the season, Hamid Altentop, who played with, um, well, he played with Bayern for a while, right? Um, yeah, Bayern, Galatasaray, uh, won the league uh, with Bayern, won the league with Real Madrid. Um, obviously, he didn't play a lot when he was at Real, but he had a jersey, you know, and you got to be pretty good to have a jersey at Real Madrid. So, um I was able to get him, and I didn't even have to give him a DP contract. But he is making a whopping four hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars. Now, obviously, he's old. That goes against my typical transfer policy, which, if you've seen my videos before, you know I don't like doing this. But um, it was kind of a deal where it was he was my scouts brought him to me, and I don't know if you want to call it an impulse purchase. You know, he was right next to the register when I'm walking out the door. That might have been part of it, but he's really good, and he does help solidify my midfield, especially that defensive mid position, which is going to be important because of how thin my back line is now. Um, so I brought him in, and then I brought in a bunch of young guys. Um, I'm not going to try to pronounce this guy's name, but he is a, a Guinean um, midfielder. He's going to eventually be my number 10. You look at that determination, the potential ability and his determination sold me. Um, that's... You know, 19. That's there's very few MLS players with 19 determination. And then you look at his passing, uh, his decisions, and his vision. 12 passing, 15 decisions, 14 in vision. That right there for an 18 year old with four star potential, he is going to develop into well, in 15 first touch by the way, he's going to develop into probably the most ideal number 10 that i can have um so very excited about him uh, a couple of the guys not as excited about but you know hopeful would be a good word wallace is a striker um 13 determinations not great but it's pretty good for mls um you know he's, he, he's three star potential maybe be good i don't know we'll see he's brazilian um he was another free transfer um I think what other I mean you know 11 finishing um, 11 heading so hopefully I can train him into you know a player that I in this kind of maybe someday I'll, I'll talk more in detail about this but he fits kind of my idea about center strikers center strikers in the game well in football in general are overvalued um, they're the last guy to touch the ball before it goes into the net so <clears throat> because of that Ever, you know when you, a striker gets 10 15 goals their value starts shooting up when really they're not that great so i like to get average strikers develop them a little bit get them scoring goals and then i'm going to sell them for way more than they're worth and then be able to bring another guy in you know until i do find a super high quality one um so he'll kind of fit that bill um <clears throat> i also got it this guy jordan this was another impulse buy low determination low everything really but it, my scout said three and a half stars, you know? So um, I'm going to give him a go. Three and a half is like the minimum. Um, it does kind of make my eyes open up a little bit when I see somebody with three and a half stars. Uh, and he was a free transfer. He's a res on a reserve contract, minimum salary. Doesn't count against the cap. So, you know, with, with those guys, I'll take a few risks. I'll bring in a guy and minimum salary doesn't hurt the cap because... What's the worst case? You know, if he's bad, well, then I just dump him uh, if he never develops. Um, but maybe he develops and becomes a good player. <clears throat> then I can give him a contract, you know, and he'll play. But um, so those are the main guys I brought in. I did also bring in this other guy, this Australian. Um, let me go to RGV. He, I loaned him off to my reserve team, <clears throat> um, Archie George. I've never even heard of this guy. He's... 
I don't know. He it's weird. He's he looks he looks like a regen, but I don't I didn't know they did regens in the beginning of the game. Um, my game started in January, so where did this guy come from? Maybe he's real. I don't know. Maybe some sort of I I do have a <clears throat> a database update from sorted.si.net, so maybe he's in there. If you know Archie George, let me know if he's actually if there's any hope of him being any good. I brought him in. <clears throat> He, um, he's got 15 determination, which is pretty good. 16 work rate. Um, those numbers kind of like jumped out at me. He's only 18. Um, and if you look at his potential, my scouts give him four stars. So, you know, and even that, that last star is kind of black. So I'm thinking that he's going to be good. Um, so I signed him, loaned him off. We'll see how he does. Um, so those are the guys I brought in. Um, we'll look at quickly at my preseason. Yeah. So preseason's kind of well. I started off as I always do with the tour. Went to Brazil this year and did pretty well. Ended up with a draw in this game. It should have been a win. Um, overall, by preseason, went 111, drew four. And I won the Disney Pro Soccer Classic, um, which is a preseason tournament. Um, I usually win these. I win these about three. I win every three out of every four of these that I compete in, and it's usually because I rotate my squad. Like my second team plays a whole game, my first team plays a whole game, my second team plays a whole game, and then my first team will play in the championship. Uh, some of these competitions are shorter, like there's only two games or three. In any case, I rotate it with the plan to try and win it. And most of these other teams don't do that. They come in with you know they'll they'll just play their first whatever no matter what no matter how tired or fatigued they are <clears throat> and i'd usually start my preseason earlier than a lot of the other teams and so i'm just more fit um and that was the case so i won the pro soccer classic got that trophy the first trophy even though it's a nobody it's like the who cares cup you know so it's the really who cares cup because it doesn't mean anything at all <clears throat> but that takes me into the regular season which, by the way, those cups are a part of the file that I created. Uh, they are real. Um, they do exist in real life. And so I made it part of the game just to kind of, uh, you know, get the real life experience in managing MLS. And so so that's how things have gone so far. Maybe in the future, I did kind of think about looking at tactics, but I'm going to wait on that because what I'm going to do is um, I've got a video of the first game against... Um, Portland, or sorry, Philadelphia. And so I thought what I would do is we would, I would kind of commentate on this game. Um, let's see, where is it? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so yeah, that's the game. For some reason, it's, that's funny. Why is it? Okay, yeah, we'll do this. Yeah. So this is uh, this is actually a recording of the game against Philadelphia. It was our first game of the season. Um, and one thing I'll notice, if you look, their left back is playing as an inverted wing back. This kind of just sort of, I don't know, whatever. Look at my in-match process. Um, so the inverted wing back, and I don't remember when I noticed this, but he really hanged, he really, he this guy, Gaddis, he was cutting in every time. And so... Um, what we'll eventually see is I adjust my tactics <clears throat> to try and exploit that that space because if you look, I don't know if it'll show. Yeah, you can't really. See, my cursor doesn't show, but um, if you look at their, the left side of their formation, it's it's always wide open. So <clears throat> I'll, I'll what I do is eventually you'll see me switch my my whole sort of formation around. Um, and a can, by the way, scared the crap out of me right there. But yeah, here I go. So I'm, I think this is it. And I didn't like how Martinez was playing as an advanced playmaker. So <clears throat> I made him a central midfielder. Um, and I think I took away Cabezas' deep line playmaker. Yeah. And put him in central midfield on support. Uh, I looked around at... Make sure his settings were okay. <clears throat> yep. And then just went back into the game. <clears throat> yeah, or did I change my shape? 
No, I just went back in. Road games are tough. I mean, that's in you know in general, I guess. But in the first season in MLS, they're especially difficult, in my experience. So yeah, this is when I kind of realized that what I'm doing is not going to work. So and I can't remember when I yeah. So here's where I pause it. I realize that 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 inverted wing back. I I need, I need to try to do something to exploit that. So Kyoto is my right wing, but he's playing as an inside forward, but I wanted him to sit wide. So I went to winger so that he sat wider. Thought about, well, I did make him get further forward so that he's higher up the pitch to receive that ball from, uh, well, from whoever, and maybe hit Gaddis while he's up in the midfield. Um... But that also meant that I had to switch everything. So I didn't want I didn't want my right back bombing forward. Certainly didn't want him dribbling or losing the ball up there with you know that with Gaddis in a position to really hurt me. Um, so, but then I also switched the other side. So my other winger is cutting in. Um, it really is just flipping my formation from one side to the other is what what it amounted to. Because I did want to keep that dynamic of having one fullback bombing forward, playing with the winger on his side. <clears throat> and so that's what I did. A um, little glimpse into my whatever <laughs> match management. And I don't know, I'll let you decide. Um, things did start going pretty well. Can't remember when I started. I never controlled the game as well as I like. Um, but there you see, I started to get another shot. <clears throat> Leads to Cabezas. Back to Martinez. Lung fist on the left. <laughs> and then Kyoto with the goal. So even though I had him at winger, Kyoto still scores the goal. Um, and you know, changes like that, you may not result in a goal, but. If it does, if it helps me keep possession, um, then you know that's mission accomplished, right? If I'm if I win the match, then obviously something that I did I did was okay. But I will say I this was I didn't fully deserve anything from this match. Maybe a draw at best. happy with your performance and then i always anybody that doesn't react well to the team talk i always give them the i have faith in you and usually it does it right so then we went from here and just tried to hold on <clears throat> so promotion relegation in usa yeah it's a big there's a big argument about it i guess um we'll talk about it while we watch the rest of the game here um I guess so the, the 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 big knock on it is that a lot of these investors which let's be fair with these you know these millionaires that invest in MLS they're the reason that MLS exists they're the reason that soccer is where it is um, they're the ones who forked out the dough back when the league started which when the league started I think there was four or five investors so all the teams were owned by you know some guy some owners own you know, multiple teams. Um, wasn't until I don't know eight to ten years into the league that you know each team had its own owner. Um, but you know th these guys, the, the the knock on it is on on Pro Rail, which here Elton Top, he's not quite fit yet, so I'm subbing him out and I'm putting uh, Seren back at center mid support. Um, so if if you're going to be less likely to invest in a professional team if there's a chance that they're going to get relegated to what in the Amer in the United States we would call a minor league. Um, you know, like MLS expansion fees are, oh man, tens of millions of dollars now if you want to expand. I want to think it's like a hundred million, but I, I could be wrong on that. I don't remember exact number, but it's a lot. I mean, it's a lot of money to ex to buy an expansion team. That's going to dry up if you have promotion relegation. Nobody's going to want to invest in that, you know, right away. Um, so that's the knock on it. 
And I, I think that's a fair criticism. On the other hand, what a lot of the promotion relegation supporters would tell you is that anything that you lost at the highest level, you're going to gain at the lower levels. So, for example, there's a club, I read an article, and there's a club in Oregon called Lane United. And they're a PDL team, which is the development league. They play in the summer. They play like 14 games. And um, this owner said in this article that he he would be able to get more investors if he could tell these investors that they would be able to, um, you know, that if the club was able to be promoted, they might be able to get more of an investment and get more money to build facilities, um, obviously to pay salaries, to hire staff, to hire, you know, to sign players. And so if that's true for him, it probably is true for a lot of other grassroots clubs, like at the lowest levels. Um, you know, the, the question is, is that is that going to make up for all those millions that you would lose at the top? And I don't know. I, Like I said, I would love to see ProRail. I think it would be a lot of fun. But if, if it caused all the money to dry up at the top, I don't know if that's good. I don't know if that's good for soccer or not. Maybe it is. Maybe it would be fine. Um, but I, just, I don't think you can say, well, look, it works everywhere else. It works in England, so it'll work here. I don't think you can say that. Uh, it may be true, but I, don't, I just don't think you can say that with any real degree of certainty. Um, you know, when you're talking like, hey, football's a big money sport. And there I'm trying to give this away. I went contain, and I went to my defensive tactic, where my back line is actually dropped off a little bit, but we just, we did not, well, our lack of composure is kind of showing up here, I think. Um, so anyway, I obviously I am for ProRail. I made this file, you know. Um, if I was not, if I was against promotion relegation, I wouldn't have made this. Um, I do think it would be fun, but I'm just, I'm not ready to say that we have to do it or else, you know, it's one of the things, once you put it in, it may be hard to undo. It, you know, if you put it in and it's not working, then you might, and you, you see that and you lose a lot at the top and, and all of a sudden all the money going to player development is, is being sucked dry. It's, it's like, it would be like putting toothpaste back in the tube. I don't think that we could um, that that would work. So um, so anyway, that is the end of the game. I um, a big win as you guys all saw already, probably before I even started the video. Got the first win of the season, three points. We're now um, well, we're tied for first in the Western Conference, and so. Um, that's where I am. Stay tuned to this series. Can I avoid relegation? Can I um, qualify for the Champions League and eventually play in the Copa Sudamericana? I hope so. Looking looking ahead, um, my next video probably will look a little bit what I'm trying to accomplish tactics-wise with this team, although you probably already know. <laughs> uh, and then I might look at my training, what I do with training. Um, so this is Uncle Sam. Signing off. If you have any suggestions, any criticisms, please post them in the comments, and I will see you next time.